you're saying one thing, but you're thinking something else. Are y'all hearing me today? Yes. And the something else is not really complementary to God's process, but it's a little anti-God's process with a little frustration sprinkled on it, like you sprinkle, you know, sugar over your pancakes and you know, that powdered sugar over your little, just a sprinkle of it. Understand that when you pray on a consistent basis, God is able to address your spirit and God will give you what I call the strength to receive the help and the patience until he does what he says he's going to do. All right. Which helps my attitude. Because if I'm not praying enough, then I'm in, I'm in chapter 7 of Romans and I'm struggling with me. And I got a double nature because Mr. Young is still alive and well. And Pastor Young is struggling because Mr. Young is up talking too much. Mr. Young got the floor too much, which means God does not have my floor. When I'm up, I'm up. Are you hearing me today? When I'm up and I got the floor, I got the floor. Regardless of who's in the eternal room, is there anybody here today? Don't tell me you have not prayed or attempt to pray, but really you telling God what he ought to do instead of listening to what he said he was going to do. And so you have the floor. When it's that way, Sister Rod, I guarantee you, there ain't enough prayer going on. It's not consistent because after a while, when you get to God so much, attitude has changed a little bit. Because you get around God, listen, when you start to work and walk with God, you gain some patience because you find out one thing is like my schedule and his schedule does not coincide. Matter of fact, he's always late and never on time. Don't act like you don't know. Talk to Mary and Martha. Deliberately, you let them, he let them know your timing is not my timing. Because if your timing is working, God or my Father is not going to get the due glory that he needs because you're going to rush the job and you're not going to let people see how God can really bail you out at the worst of it. Because if it's up to you, I ain't going through the worst of it. Just get me to the front of the line. Just heal my body. I don't need to go through the rest of this. But Jesus said, catch it now, John. I think it's John 11 chapter where he's dealing with Mary. He's dealing with Martha. When he finally, listen, finally gets there, he already, what? He already did. It's like, man, we wrote you, dude. We sent you a letter by somebody. We know you got it. Are you hearing me today? Yes, sir. You sent God your prayers. You know God has it. But he did not move. But what he did was, after the worst had happened, God help us today. After the worst had happened, he goes to the worst place where you can be. And he begins to do the best work. Yes. All right. So he says this before he even calls him back a while. While he's getting ready to make this uh, to, 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 to make this grand scene and this, this, this uh, display of his godly power on earth. He begins where he says, Father, I thank you. He says, but listen, for the sake of those who are looking and standing around, because those who are looking, number one, ain't convinced of God yet. All, right. All they know is you in a pickle. And we know you believed in God, but God has yet to do what you said he was going to do. So for the sake of those who doubt and for the sake of those, listen, who've never really seen God work in an emergency. All right, yeah. He says, for the sake of those around, let, them, let, let this happen that they might believe that I am. Yes. Amen. So listen, you cannot help me rush the process. Because when you're rushing the process, you're off off balance. Your priorities are not the same. Your attitude is not the same. Which takes us right back to, listen, you've got to keep before God about what is on you the most. I'm, I'm going to say that right there. That's youngology. You've got to keep on God about what 
is on you the most. What that lady, the injustice that she experienced, she kept knocking. She kept asking. And you know he did. You know he played her off because it wasn't, it wasn't his schedule. But finally, he said, if I don't, she's going to drive me crazy. And so Jesus used that for you and us to grab a hold to about how often you ought to pray and about the persistence that you ought to have when you pray. If he uses that, what does that say to us about your real prayer life? Now notice I said your real prayer life. I'm not talking about the one that you show us here. I'm talking your real prayer, your real time, your how much do you really? Your can you ever be found without your phone? Your can you be found without the TV? Where that real prayer time? Because baby, that's what matters. The display ain't nothing. You can, you can get up there, you can do it, yank it, pull it, whatever you want to do, holler, scream, roll, everybody hit the ceiling. Doesn't matter. Because he said, listen, what you do in your prayer closet in private when ain't nobody looking, he says, I will reward you what? Openly. I want God to lift me up. I want God to take me to the next level. I want God to let his anointing flow on me right now. I want to be able to speak in demons, you know. I want to be able to speak in people, get up and live. I got news for you. If you're not close to God and in your prayer closet every day, hang it up. He says, I'll reward you for what you do in private. So in other words, I'm not going to reward you for getting on the stage. Because everybody get on the stage. It's fun to get on the stage. I got to remember, I'm on the floor. Right? If I'm on the floor, guess who ain't on the floor? But I'm just saying. It's not about that. It's about the work and your practice that you put in in time with God in private. In your prayer closet where it gets deep. Now see, if you really got a closet, how many of you? Y'all seen that movie, uh, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe? And I'm done. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe? Right? No? Read the book? Anybody? Yes. All right. I read, I read the book when I was in fifth grade. And watch watch the movie. So when it come out, watch it. <sighs> a real long, long story short, these brothers and sisters get sent away to somebody's auntie's house because the war was happening. It was back in the 40s or something like that. And so they're in this big mansion. It's a big mansion, but there ain't nothing to do, right? And so there's somebody, all of a sudden, they're playing hide and go seek. And so one day, the little one, there's like four of them right there, four of them, a boy about 16, a girl about 15, another boy about 12, and a little girl about seven, eight. So they play hide and go seek in the house, right? Mansions, big room. This little girl comes upon this closet that's just standing there. And she decides she's gonna hide in the closet, right? But this ain't no ordinary closet. Because when she gets into the closet, the closet keeps going further and further back. And as she walks, you can hear uh, like what she's walking on begins to change. You know, kind of like crunching under her feet. And then it begins to get cold. And then it begins, then she starts to see pine trees with snow. And then lo and behold, she's in another dimension. Are you hearing me today? Yes, sir. That's how prayer is, really, if you got a real prayer closet. Right, right. You might think it might look like when you step in, that's it. No, but once you step in and you begin to walk with Christ spiritually, you will find out that if you really walk in there with the intent to walk with him, that that will, it's like a portal, and it will take you into new spiritual dimensions and places, and the places that you are supposed to be, God will show you in your closet. That's why they say about the outside peace. But the bottom line, now we coming into a prayer revival. If you haven't started praying, which you should have been praying, and sometimes, you know, I, I you know, uh, Brother Shiner, sometimes I try to teach by example. Sometimes y'all pray for me because maybe I don't get it all right. Right? Because honestly, y'all should have been like, Pastor, prayer revival coming up. Pastor, don't we normally pray seven days out? Pastor, don't you normally send something out? How long have y'all been with me? Are y'all hearing me today? And so this is what I'm talking about. Having a prayer consciousness, not here, not prayer display, prayer consciousness. Mm. Say it again, not prayer display, prayer 
consciousness. But a prayer consciousness. Or let me use a better word, prayer awareness. Ah, that's where it is. Because really, as a church that has 